So Tessie's bedroom is actually the big playroom outside of our bedroom. All of the other kids have bedrooms with doors upstairs. Um, our house has four actual bedrooms, and so the boys share a room, the girls each have their own room, but Maggie is really active and loud at night, Sadie has a lot of things that are breakable, and Tessie is really into breaking things. And then there is this big playroom, and that is Tessie's room, but it doesn't have a door, and I like Tessie being right outside our bedroom, really close to us where I can hear her and see what's going on. But one of the things about Tessie that would be a problem no matter where she was in the house is that she is fearless, and she likes to get up and just kind of roam around the house. One of the problems with this at bedtime is that she has no problem waiting till everyone's asleep and, you know, going upstairs. This is the most recent thing. She's gotten a little bit taller. She can reach a lot of things, going upstairs, trying to unscrew light bulbs. Um, our chandelier in the, or our like light over the dining room table is now as high as it can possibly get. Um, we had to take all of the chairs that aren't like big heavy benches out of there so she can't get to that because she figured out that if she put chairs up there now she could reach them. She's just very adventurous at night. So anyways, one thing that I've done on nights where she is particularly adventurous is I will let her watch one episode of Shimmer and Shine to help her get to sleep so that she falls asleep watching it and then I turn it off. And because she will not go to sleep with me or Paul there. If Paul or I go and lay down there or sit by her, she just gets so excited that she won't go to sleep. And Maggie was the same way when Maggie was little. I used to try to sit by Maggie and I would sit with her for hours, an hour and a half, two hours, every single night. And I did it for like a year. And she would just sit there and stim rubbing on the back of my hand or rubbing like right here on my hand. And one day I got up and went to the bathroom and she cried for like a minute and was asleep. And that was when I realized that like it was actually like holding my hand that was keeping her awake. Um, and I realized it much faster with Tessie that if I was there, Tessie would just be so giggly and um, overstimulated that she could not sleep with me in the room with her once she had like toddler age. So what you're going to see in this video is Tessie and Kitty Fish. And the thing to understand about Kitty Fish, Kitty Fish is not the most friendly cat when it comes to kids. We got him when we had this mouse invasion when we lived in the city. And there was this really cold winter and we lived in a rental and it had a window in the basement that had been replaced with insulation. And I hadn't really noticed that. It had like a board over it and then insulation over the board. When we had this very cold winter where we lost power for eight days, mice just sort of invaded our house. And we went from having no mouse problems during the first like two years we'd lived there to suddenly we had mice, many, many mice. And nothing was working. Paul had wanted a cat and I just, I didn't want pets. <laughs> I didn't want pets because I didn't want to be responsible for another thing because at that point we had a one-year-old, a three-year-old, and a five-year-old. Maggie was like just about to be diagnosed, but I think that was kind of the most chaotic our lives had ever been. Paul was still in law school and I just did not want to be responsible for like another thing. So he finally convinced me to get a cat and Kitty Fish was, is, well really was at this point. <laughs> um, I'm sure he would be if we had mice, but we don't. An amazing mouser and he came and saved the day. We got him at a shelter, but he's not super friendly. He was already a full-grown cat when we got him and he's super friendly and cuddly with me, but he definitely knows like kids are loud and we have a cat, we have a laundry room that has a cat door and when the kids are awake he spends his time in there. He sleeps by Tessie at night. When Tessie was little, Tessie didn't really act like she saw kitty fish until she was like three and a half years old and then one day after we got Snowball. It was like she suddenly saw the cats and realized that they were alive and was like startled. <laughs> this cat has been walking around you, sleeping by you. I mean, he is a large gray cat and he's been next to you all this time and it was like she suddenly noticed him. But he had been spending so much time by her all this time when she was awake, when she was crawling, when she was toddling around. I guess he'd just gotten used to her because all of the other cat kids would make a big deal about the cats, especially the boys. I guess in that time he got so used to her, he decided that he liked her. I expected that to really change once she realized she existed. The funny thing was it didn't. He's not a mean cat. I've seen Kitty Fish bat the other kids away or hiss or run away just for the other kids, you know, being near him. And with Tessie, he is super indulgent. And so I was surprised 
when I had been sitting with Tessie and I was cuddling her a little bit before bed and told her goodnight. I knew she was going to be up playing for a little bit longer because she had had a nap, which is not ever really a good thing with Tessie. She is at the point where if she has any sort of nap, she's going to be up way later than she should be and you can't make Tessie go to sleep. I put her episode of Shimmer and Shine on and I went to go into my room to fold some laundry, hoping that she would go to sleep soon. And just as I went to close the door, I saw her walk around across the room and go straight for kitty fish and pick him up. And I turned right around because she knows. I mean, she doesn't know, but Tessie understands a lot. I mean, I can tell by when we're having conversations, Tessie's expressions, the things that Tessie does, the way she reacts to what we say. Tessie understands a whole lot. I'm all about presuming competence, but I don't even have to presume that much because you can tell by her facial expressions that she understands a great deal. <laughs> and so I turned around and the, and I'm always talking to her about being gentle with the animals, being gentle with the cats, gentle, 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 gentle. And so I turned around and was like, put the cat down, put the cat down, no, down, 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 put the cat down as I, as I turn back around in the doorway. And instead she books it across the room, holding him under her arms. And well, you'll see, she did put him down. And the thing is, I know other kids like, the other kids pet him and he is hissing and batting them away and scratching. He's never really scratched anyone badly, but you know, he's not gentle. And she manhandles him up onto the couch and he just sits there like this little limp kitty and lets her do whatever. So you'll see the video. I'll show the video now because we have a camera in there so I can watch when I'm cooking or when I'm doing stuff like this, I get alerts on my watch now. And a little bit later when I went out there, he was laying next to her in her bed while she was asleep, right snuggled up next to her shoulders while she was asleep. He is so attached to her. <laughs> Anyways, that is it for today. If you like this video, we'd love it if you'd give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in all things autism, we'd love it if you'd hit subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow.